Now here we're going to be looking at different types of growing containers, and we can see in this image the wide variety of containers being grown here. Now we're looking at some things that are a little bit more commonly used. So first off, the common types of containers are plastic or solid side pots, air pots, fabric pots, grow bags, biodegradable pots by a couple of different names here, and also discuss where square pots versus round pots may be most advantageous to use. So starting off with the obvious, we have our plastic uh, solid side pots. We see a wide variety here. They're very common. They're considered to be the standard. Uh, there's many options in size and shape and color and thickness. They often have the option of being reused. Uh, so this is what makes them the kind of standard. They're kind of lightweight. They're easy to get. They can get in large quantities. Uh, all and the options of being reused is the main reason why these are considered the standards. However, there's other options available to growers, such as air pots. Uh, the goal is to maximize aeration. They induce air pruning of roots to reduce root circling. Basically, they allow air to come in and they cause the root tips then to kind of dry out and cause those roots tips to dry out, but then causing increased branching. Uh, they've been used a lot in tree production, as we can see here, to make for easier transplant process. Um, again, while well, there's a zoom in one of here, they can be used also on a large scale. They've gone through some different revisions, uh, but again, in tree production is kind of where they're most commonly being used now, because these are looking at being transplanted, outgrown, propagated, and then transplanted. Fabric pots are smart pots as a name brand, if you're familiar with that. They claim the same benefits as air pots, but they have the added um, benefit of easy delivery, storage, and shipping. This is because they completely fold down, uh, and they can be almost vacuum sealed, and many pots can be shipped in a very small area. Uh, they're available in very small sizes to, as you can see here, very large sizes. So don't think that these fabric pots are just limited to small little grow bags. They can be grown uh, full-size plants in an outdoor situation, as we see here. These pallets are approx approximately 4 feet by 4 feet, just to give you an idea. And here's a traditional plastic pot in comparison. Grow bags, something a little different. Uh, there's potential confusion between fabric pots and bags, depending on the material. Grow bags are typically made from plastic, creating a solid sides. So unlike the fabric pots we saw there, there's a lot of breathing that can occur. These are typically solid sides. However, these pla this plastic is, is closer resemblance of a heavy trash bag uh, than a rigid side of a traditional plastic pot. They offer, again, the ease of storage, reduced shipping costs, and lightweight and benefits associated similar to the fabric pots. The drawbacks include that reduced usage life is typically one to three years at one of these grow bags. Uh, they won't last forever, and depending on what conditions they are used in. Then we have biodegradable pots. The goal is to be able to plant the entire pot to reduce uh, waste and time. Common types include the peat pot or jiffy pot. <clears throat> There's cow pots, dot pots, and quar pots. Uh, these are some common names, jiffy being probably the most widely uh, known, uh, and cow pots being made out of literally cow manure. Now they see biodegradable, uh, while we have all these different pot types, the biodegradability does vary. We can see here's a field trial I ran with tomatoes. You can see a quar pot here basically did not degrade at all, even though roots were able to penetrate. The cow pot almost completely broke down. The jiffy pot did break down, but still has some of its large components still visible in the field after a, a growing season here for tomato. Then we get into the debate of round versus square. Now keep in mind that the plants do not prefer one over the other. However, to maximize space, the grower may want to favor one versus the other. Early in plant development, square pots are preferred since this allows efficient packing of plants and minimizes empty space that we see here. Kind of line all these pots up together. The reason why I like the square pots early on is packing all these together, efficient use of space, and also kind of keeping that moisture level a little bit higher. There's no, um, reduces airflow in total there. Keeping all those, that moisture there uh, in close proximity and also allows these to be packed under lights efficiently. Later in development though is when transplanting and shape is less of a concern simply because plants are not growing uh, in a pot to pot kind of situation. Round pots are preferred simply because there'll be less media used for the same basic footprint. And because those plants are going to be bigger and spread out, those pots aren't going to be touching uh, typically anyway, uh, so a grower can switch over to the round. So even though the plants don't really care which one versus the other, the grower may, depending on the situation and depending on the growth stage of the plant. 